Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar then we'll go through the weather warnings, the 5 day precipitation, temperature and wind gusts and then we'll have a look at the long range with the GFS, GM, Eastern AF and GFS ensembles as we do have a named storm incoming over the next 24 hours. Storm Malik is going to be hitting pretty much the northern half of the United Kingdom, mostly Scotland but also we'll be seeing some stronger gusts even in northern England and generally quite widely 30 40 mile per hour gusts now this storm has been named by the Danish Met Office so not by the UK Met Office but it's of course it's still a named storm so we still need to report on it um, and it's yeah spun up very very quickly now we've been looking at this low pressure system the last few days saying it could be a little bit windy with this but it must have really picked up in the latest model runs for the uh, Met Office or Danish Met Office to issue um, a storm name to it and it has now got yellow and amber warnings in force across Scotland it is going to be predominantly a wind event there's not going to be too much rain with it but of course there could still be some squally rain in Scotland so do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Also, do check out the podcast release earlier. Have a look at the snow that we have been seeing in the Mediterranean region and why that's going to the Mediterranean and the UK isn't seeing anything really at all so far. Now, if we do start with the live radar, you can see it doesn't look any, it doesn't really look too bad. It doesn't look stormy at all. We've got some rain bands moving in and some heavy rain and snow pushing into parts of Norway. But if we do go to the future look ahead, which does give estimates, you can see Storm Malik out in the North Atlantic. Now, the storm is going to ride over the high pressure that's sinking southwards, and the centre of the low is going to the north of the UK. But it's to its southern edge where we see the isobars really tighten. That's where you're going to see the strongest winds down the eastern side of Scotland. Again, it could be very severe because those winds will be probably coming in from a north to northwesterly direction. Again, an unusual direction, similar to what we saw with the storm Arwen earlier this uh, earlier this winter, which did have some severe impacts. Red warning from that. This, however, will own, only has amber warnings. So it could be a very severe storm, even though it has only cropped up in the last 24 hours or so. Now you can see the tweet from the UK Met Office earlier. At 2 p.m., low pressure system has been named Storm Malik by the Danish Meteorological Institute, and will bring high winds and wet weather to the north to the northern UK on Saturday. So, yeah being recognised there by the Met Office. And if we do have a look at the warnings, you can see they first come into force on um, tomorrow. Oh, yeah, so tomorrow morning, we have a widespread wind warning across Northern Ireland, Scotland, whole of Scotland, really, and parts of Northern England from 4 a.m. tomorrow until 3 um, p.m. Strong westerly winds will bring some disruption on Saturday to Scotland and parts of Northern Ireland. And then again, another um, amber warning put in force here where we could be seeing Storm Malik bringing a period of very strong winds and disruption across the eastern Scotland on Saturday, 7 a.m. until 3 p.m. Again, confidence in the occurrence of the strongest winds has increased, and the impact matrix has updated to reflect this, pushing the warning to amber. Again, 50 to 60 miles per hour widely, and excess of 75 miles per hour high impact and high likelihood. Now, if we do move to Sunday, we still have a widespread yellow wind warning in force. Again, from 6 p.m. on Sunday until 12 on Monday. And again, seeing that same warning as we do have another low pressure system potentially bringing some unsettled and stormy conditions. Uh, but yeah, very interesting seeing Storm Malik. Um, sort of first real weather event we've had for a number of weeks uh, as the high pressure finally does break down. Now, if you have a look at the wind gusts, we'll see how it is very localised, these extreme gusts, and how it is predominantly in the north. Now, you can see nothing major at the moment, really. It's really quite settled, but you can see in the far northwest, those really strong wind gusts starting to push in from the northwest. And we're starting to see 50, 60 mile per hour winds by tonight. Those spreading southwards, and then eventually 80, 90 mile per hour winds moving through early hours of Saturday. If you are far up... Saturday around 8, 9 a.m. That's where the peak gusts are going to be. So it's not in the middle of the night. 70, 80 miles per hour. Again, mainly over high ground and on the coast. Maybe only 40, 50 mile per hour gusts to low lying areas, sheltered areas. But if you are exposed, it could be 80 mile per hour gusts plus. A 
and even in the south, 30, 40 mile per hour gusts, and general areas in mid Midlands, Northern England, Northern Ireland, 50, 60 mile per hour. Eventually, that amber warning does move away, and we still see 56 mile per hour, 50 or 60 mile per hour gusts through the afternoon and evening, but you can see those gusts too out in the northern sea, and that's why the Danish Met Office has named it, so it's going to be impacting them quite significantly as well. Now, through Saturday evening, things are going to die down. Um, we're going to see a period of quite mundane weather for another vigorous low moves into parts of Scotland, and again, we could be seeing 80 90 mile per hour gusts with this and uh, i would be wouldn't be surprised if we saw another amber warning put in place and maybe even another named storm with this but it would probably be named by the uk met office as it will predominantly be impacting um scotland but you can see how it goes from 80 90 mile per hour against to nothing and that just shows you how intense those ice balls wrapped around the center of the low very localized once again but could be some severe impacts before we do move beyond that now, if we do have a look at the precipitation, you'll see it's not too major, really, in terms of precipitation from this named storm, Storm Malik. Now, you can see over the course of this evening, rain pushing into the north. could be quite squally at times. Um, and you can see some heavy rain does push in through Saturday morning and could be significant for a time, but nothing too crazy not a massive squally band could be some quite heavy convective showers maybe even some, some snow behind that as well before it does eventually push through and we start to see more um set conditions through saturday evening before we see that other vigorous low moving through sunday that low we see on sunday evening could be more impactful um i do suspect so that's one we really need to keep an eye on because it had could have significant snowfall very strong winds than we've just seen and from very heavy rain for low-lying areas very intense conditions and you can see that sort of uh, that bow shape it has showing intense um intense intensification from this low pressure system so yeah we'll have to see how this does play out but we could be seeing a name storm tomorrow and another one through sunday into monday but we'll keep you updated to that now beyond that we could be seeing again more heavy rain pushing in but it doesn't look like as strong for wind so unlikely to be uh, any more name storms for the following few days now if we look at the temperatures see the afternoon around eight nine degrees so nothing too cold nothing too mild really at average for this evening into tomorrow morning you can see temperatures are actually quite mild and so no snow really going to be in from this named storm however you do see cold air does quickly spread through around saturday lunchtime so it could be turning back to snow some of these showers through saturday afternoon primarily over high ground of course you see low lying air is still four or five degrees before that cold air sinks southwards we can be seeing quite a widespread frost especially further northwards on sunday and even into the south maybe in a few spots through sunday morning and then sunday quite chilly six seven degrees in the south freezing in the north that vigorous low moves in could be falling as snow and the rest of this week is still looking reasonably chilly but nothing too crazy um not looking too massively cold not looking massively mild so a very very lively weekend coming could be two back-to-back -back named storms At the moment we only have storm malik but there's potential we see another named storm for sunday evening into monday and we'll have to really keep an eye on that as that is a very localized but vigorous air of low pressure sunday evening that i am keeping a close eye on again for scotland scotland could be getting battered this weekend elsewhere could see some strong gusts could be seeing some squally rain but scotland central scotland is really going to be battered over the course of this weekend by stormy weather now if we do have a look at the longer term where we do actually still have the um sort of consistent signal of it turning colder in the longer term very stormy over the next couple of days but then turning increasingly colder now if we do have a look at the latest from the gfs run now you can see as we progress through you can see Storm Ma uh, Malik sort of spinning up just to the south of the centre of the low, which is to our north, and then it slowly went through, goes through Denmark. And you see the really tight ice bars through Denmark, which are giving those, or giving them the reason for for naming it, uh, having it named Storm. And then we see that other other vigorous low moving through on Sunday evening. Um, again, could be named before it moves into Europe, and then we just go into a bit of a northwesterly phase, and you can see we have this consistent signal in seven days' time of seeing quite a chilly north to northwesterly flow. Um, could be looking really quite cold with that, and you can see minus five line move through stays before we see a bit of milder air push in, but then another patch of really quite chilly polar maritime air mass around day ten and beyond, and we stay in this colder air mass all the way 
to the end of the run and stay in it. So we could be going into quite a prolonged cold spell on this latest GFS run. Again, it has to get support from the other ensembles and other runs, which there's a bit of support, um, or at least quite a lot of support for cold rare at a time. Maybe not, not as sustained as this GFS operational run is showing. But again, we'll have to see how it does play out. But it could be quite a chilly opening to February with definitely some snowfall and some wintry conditions in the north. But could be even coming to the south for a period of time as well. So I'll have to really keep an eye on that. Could be going from very stormy to maybe even very wintry. Um, looks, uh, it's very, uh, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to it really, as we've had a lot of mundane weather recently. And it does look like it's going to be really livening up over the next week or two. Now, if we do have a look at the GM run, see how that does compare. Again, you can see Storm Malik moving through over the course of the seeming, just where it's, it's just where those real tight isobars in are just to our north. Um, again, if we do move into the United Kingdom, look, you can see Storm Alec just to our north. Really strong winds moving in. And then we could see, again, another potential little name storm through uh, Sunday evening into Monday before we move beyond that and go into a northwesterly phase. Very, very similar to the GFS run with quite a lot of northwesterly winds. Quite chilly and unsettled. However, towards day 10, where the GFS has this mild air shifted a bit further southwards, the GM run has it shifted a tad further northwards to have more of a milder sector. So not quite as cold, and you'd see that's reflected by a lack of blocking um, towards the northern hemisphere, which the GFS has uh, or had a little bit more. Now, if we do have a look at the ECMWF run, now, uh, I'm, a, um, I'm pretty, look, I'm looking forward to Versa Central updating the ECMWF because they are updating it as we speak. Um, and if we have a look at the ensembles in a minute, in a minute they're going to they're going to put the ECMWF ensembles on West Central as well. So they're doing a lot of upgrades on West Central. So we're still going to be looking on Meteo Seal, but I, I'm very excited to see. The amount of data we will be newly getting on the ECMWF with Veta Central, which will be nice going ahead as we only, um, or at least used to have only the midnight and the midday run for 24 hour periods and not a lot of other, a lot, not a lot of other data. But it does look like we're going to be getting all four runs in the day and we're going to be getting ensembles as well, which will be very, uh, nice to see. But if we do have a look at the ECMWF on Meteor Seal, you can see how those name storms moving through over. Uh, or the name storm moving through tonight, Storm Malik, and then we see potential another little name storm moving through there on Monday. Could be quite a vigorous system that as well. Before we go into that northwesterly phase, chilly polar maritime air mass. Towards day 10, we do start to see a bit of a high pressure ridge, maybe turning things a little bit mild, especially in the middle Atlantic toward the UK. Um, but you can see beyond that colder air mass, we stay in that colder air mass before it does look like milder air will be pumping back into the North Atlantic. So it would go milder beyond that, but we're still seeing a consistent signal for at least a few days of cold polar maritime air mass in the long term. So that hasn't really changed from yesterday so yeah looking very interesting in both the short and longer term something we haven't seen for quite a while has been very mu very mundane over the last couple weeks now if we do finish up have a look at the gfs ensembles now you can see if we do quickly update it uh you can see generally things are above average at over the next couple of days to end january before we see a real cold polar maritime air mass moving for the 31st to 1st of february Really, really temporary, only lasts about 24 hours before we go mild once again. And it's in this initial bit we're going to be seeing those lows spin up. You see minimal precipitation in the south as it's mainly going to be in the north across Scotland. But beyond that, we do see precipitation pick up. No, nothing too massive, really. Quite a light precipitation as that low pressure is always going to be centred further northwards. So we'll see, still see a lot of showers, but I don't think we'll see massive um, weather fronts moving through big frontal events. Now, as we head towards the 4th or 5th of February, we see that real cold polar maritime air mass, which still has a lot of support lasting maybe two or three days some models have it um, lasting a lot longer others have it lasting a lot of each, a lot shorter bit of a trend for a milder sector moving through in around 7th 8th of february for some go much colder others just stay around average so not too much support in the longer term um, for any single um, outcome but it does look like it will be remaining pretty chilly for uh, for a period of time at least into february milder sectors of course but if, but that could introduce more moisture, weather fronts, and maybe some more wintry conditions, especially further northwards, but maybe not exclusively. Now, if we do have a look at the snow depths also for London, interesting, a few snow depth spikes, but nothing too major. Again, any snow we see further southwards will be convective of nature. I must emphasize that. So we don't really have a clue exactly how that will play out, um, probably until uh, much, 
much nearer the time. So we'll have to see, of course, uh, how that does play out. Again, if we have a look at the two meter temperatures, we had a look at this on um, uh, weather outlook at the UK Met Office run, but you can see again, temperatures, coldest days, maybe four to five degrees below average, others nine, 10 degrees again. GFS runs sometimes, or at least the ensemble will sometimes overdo temperatures, so maybe a degree or two colder than this. There will be some overnight frosts, but also there'll be some milder days in around eight to 10 degrees. Now, if we do have, also have a look at Glasgow, where it's looking very stormy, as I said, but also really quite chilly as well, seeing days down to two or three degrees, other days around 10 degrees. If we have a look at the new snow depth spikes, you can see quite significant snow depth spikes for a period of time, maybe towards the end of this month, over the next couple of days. And then, of course, in early February, as we see cold polar maritime air. Uh, again, if we have a look at sea level pressure, you can see nothing massively in terms of low pressure. But because we're seeing these real localized spin ups of low pressure systems, that's why we are seeing name storm tomorrow and maybe once again on Sunday but we'll have to confirm that near the time and if we do have a look at the AM50 HBO temperatures you can see generally actually Glasgow is around or below average predominantly below average and when we see mild sectors around average but as I said that'll introduce moisture and there we could be and we could be seeing significant snow over higher ground so if you are in higher ground in northern England Scotland above 100 200 meters there could be significant snowfall coming over the next couple of weeks could be some frontal snow but i think predominantly we're looking at convective in from that real unstable polar maritime air mass coming in from the northwest which could deliver some wintriness even further southwards but does look pretty spot on for the north for seeing a return to proper wintry conditions but for the timing we're going to be seeing storm malik tomorrow so if you are in the impact zone for that to make sure you stay safe um, as it could be a very very lively storm for a period of time tomorrow morning so do keep to to take the necessary precautions and also keep up to date with the Met Office and of course I will be posting more videos over this weekend have a look at the potential for another stormy system through Sunday evening into Monday which does look not only very strong winds with that but could be some heavy snow and heavy rain um, which could um, exacerbate conditions as so Storm Alec tomorrow does look predominantly a wind event there will be some wintriness in the evening and the afternoon and some rain uh, on weather fronts but it doesn't look like anywhere near as vigorous as potentially Sunday does look, look, look does look like so we'll be keeping a very strong eye on that so anyway thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed subscribe so if you're new and I'll see you again for another video soon